Welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Enbridge reported Q3 results last week and announced that they were suspending their dividend reinvestment plan. This video discusses three key reasons for the decision and the expected impact to shareholders going forward. So the first reason why they cut their dividend reinvestment plan is that management's confident they no longer need this as an equity funding source. So we're in the Q3 investor presentation. If we jump to slide 19, they detail and provide an update on their funding plan execution. And you can see here their $26 billion capital plan, mostly to fund growth projects. Uh, on the left, they outline the sources of funding on the right. And between the $7.5 billion of asset sales that they've made, uh, issuance of common equity and preferred shares, as well as proceeds from the DRIP program year to date, and combine that with the expected internally generated cash flow, they feel that they're in a position where they no longer need this uh, equity funding from the DRIP program. Also point out on the right hand uh, side of the slide that uh, debt to EBITDA has been reduced below that five times uh, long-term target. So it's currently sitting at 4.7 times. So reason number one is management feels that they no longer uh, need this equity funding source. The second reason is that share count is up significantly over the last few years and further dilution makes it tough to hit per share growth targets. So if we take a look at the annual report from 2017, you can see that the share count's gone up from 847 million in 2015 to 1.5 billion in 2017. Now, a lot of that was due to the acquisition of Spectra. Um, share count has since increased further to about 1.7 billion as at Q3 2018. And we know that Enbridge is in the process of rolling up its uh, MLP subsidiaries and sponsored vehicles. So you can expect it a lot more dilution in the coming quarter as they roll in those entities. So as we know, the company is guiding to approximately 10% per share free cash flow growth through 2020. And the more shares that you have outstanding can make it a little bit tougher to achieve these per share growth targets. So if we go over to their September investor presentation, they outline historical distributable cash flow per share. And as you can see, alongside the Spectra acquisition with the dilution that resulted, distributable cash flow per share actually decreased in 2017. And going forward, it looks like it's going to resume growth. But again, achievement of these per share growth metrics uh, is tougher to do when your share count's constantly being diluted. Now the last point, and I think most importantly, is valuation. So if we go to slide 15 on the most recent Q3 results presentation. If we assume $4.30 of distributable cash flow per share, they're talking about in the upper half of the guidance range, so between 415 and 445, let's assume 430. Um, Enbridge is currently trading at less than 10 times free cash flow which is low relative to its historical valuation range of 15 to 20 times. Management likely does not want to be issuing shares at these levels. So the bottom line, share count is up significantly over the last three years. The MLP roll-ups will increase share count even further. With a dividend yield of over 6%, it makes it tough for Enbridge to hit their 10% per share growth targets if those dividends are being reinvested into additional shares. The drip is gone for now. Management feels that they don't need it, but don't be surprised if it's reinstated if and when Enbridge shares get back to the $50 to $60 per share range. Thanks for listening. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, more content to come, but until next time, don't bury your head in the sand. <laughs>